Before we start studying quantum chemistry, let's first think about the equation of motion that we learn in high school physics. Here is an object of mass m. When this object is pulled by a force f, acceleration a is generated. The problem given here is to write down the equation of motion. Acceleration means how much the speed increases per second. Mathematically, acceleration is expressed as the time derivative of velocity. The velocity is the time derivative of the position. Because the speed is how much distance it moves per second, the acceleration is ultimately expressed as the second derivative of position with respect to time. In expressing motion in this way, the concepts of differentiation and integration inevitably come up, so I hope that you will get used to these concepts in university. The answer to the equation of motion is m equals f. By the way, when it comes to writing mathematical expressions, bold letters like this express vectors. In high school, you learn to write arrows on top of letters for vectors, but in university, vectors are usually written in bold like this. However, it is difficult for you to distinguish the bold type in the video, and I will use the expression of the arrow in the upcoming videos. In contrast, oblique characters, called as italics, which are neither arrows nor boldface, are simply scalars that represent magnitude of the values. Scalars do not have dimensions. Instead of acceleration, you can represent the equation as either the first derivative of velocity v with t or the second derivative of position x with t. In any case, what this formula means is that a force creates acceleration and movement of the object. Now, I'd like to come back to chemistry. In general, chemistry is a study of molecules. How molecules are formed and changed is essential in chemistry. Molecules contain atoms, but if we look at them in more detail, atoms consist of nuclei and electrons. Both nuclei and electrons have masses. And the nucleus has a positive and the electron has a negative charge. For example, in the presence of a nucleus with plus ZE charge and an electron with minus Z charge, the two particles are attracted by a force called Coulomb attraction, which is inversely proportional to the square of the distance r and proportional to the product of the two charges. Therefore, you may think that the world of chemistry can be entirely explained by the equation of motion m equals f, where f is the Coulomb force. But unfortunately, the answer is no. The equation of motion introduced earlier, m equals f, is also called classical mechanics, but in the world of chemistry, we need to discuss it using quantum mechanics to deal with the motion of microscopic objects. Although quantum mechanics is a little more complicated, it is so similar to classical mechanics that I want to begin by covering the basics of classical mechanics.